we will take a fairy tale and imagine that it's the dream of someone in order to take a symbolic attitude. So these three attempts in the psyche to, to build a home, uh, a platform, perhaps uh, an attitude that one can stand on and mm -hmm. build a life on. So the straw attitude yep. is something that's ephemeral, although people did thatch their roofs and with straw mostly, and that worked for a good bit of time. Um, straw walls are another matter of uh, more difficulty, undoubtedly. But we can imagine that the first attitude of the young person is not strong enough to withstand the vicissitudes of life. And when we think back to the attitudes that maybe we had when we were, oh, I don't know, 15, 16 years old, we'd take a stance about one thing or another, and that when that was challenged, maybe often <laughs> they would kind of collapse, and we couldn't really defend mm -hmm. our position about the world. <laughs> or our position about why we have to have something or we have to do something. It's got to be this way, and it's, or it's life or death. Mm -hmm. These mm -hmm. straw houses, sometimes you have that term, a straw man, um, when people oh, right. talk about arguments. And uh, it's the thing that can't really withstand very much at all. Mm -hmm. It's more representative that this is a, this is a house-like product, but it really won't function as a buttress against mm -hmm. the vicissitudes or challenges of life. Right. Yeah. You, you know, um, I had sort of this memory from, you know, a thousand years ago, of, you know, that this was a story about laziness of, oh, what a lazy little pig to build a house of straw. But really, looking at this today, again, it's, and thinking about what you've just said, it's just, he doesn't know any better. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't know any better. He has to build a house. He sees a guy with straw. Uh, it's a little impulsive, a little unreflective, but also just very, very young. And then, of course, there's part of the fun of the fairy tale is, the, the, you know, the wolf and the little pig, little pig, let me in, let me in. Uh -huh. not by the hair of my chinny-chin-chin, chin, of, you, you know, you can really hear that sort of lip-smacking uh, tone here of the aggression, the thing that wants to come in, and, and, and it's fun for the child listening to the story, or the child in every single one of us. And he huffed, and he puffed, and he blew the house, and he ate up the little piggy. <laughs> so, so if I come back to, let's say, being 14, 15, 16 years old, we build a house of straw attitudes, and then somebody mm -hmm. who's a little more powerful in their mind, a little more determined, starts pressing on us that, no, you shouldn't believe that, you should believe this. Let me in. Let me be in charge. I'm the one who knows what mm. to do. And we might as teenagers, for instance, say, no, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm my own person. Then we find that our stance is not strong enough and that we wind up getting mm -hmm. swallowed by something else, someone else's attitude, someone else's mm -hmm. agenda, or perhaps being swallowed mm -hmm. by our instincts. That mm -hmm. we, we'd like to keep the wolf away from the door, but we're young, just mm -hmm. as you were saying. And we don't really know how to stand against the wolfishness inside of ourselves. And so to be swallowed by the wolf, which is interesting because in alchemy, mm -hmm. there's an image of the wolf swallowing or the lion swallowing the sun. So when yeah. the wolf or the lion swallows, it means that the instincts have gobbled up the ego. And then mm -hmm. the personality is acting in these wolf-like, lion-like ways and has lost some ground about being an individual mm -hmm. and being an ego. Uh, I was uh, just thinking about what's a wolf, and uh, in alchemy, I think it's just primal instinct. 
yes, primal exactly. hunger. Mm-hmm. And of course, the wolf is a favorite character in fairy tales, you know, as we know, uh, especially in Little Red Riding Hood. It's unconstrained, raw appetite. And we still talk about, you know, wolfing your food yes. uh, or, uh, you know, the, um, the wolf in sheep's clothing. It's the predator. Uh, he wants to devour. And that is, uh, that is in us as well. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting. The little pig who builds his house of straw, um, you know, pays for his non-reflective, non-strategic uh, outlook with with a creature that is equally non-reflective. It's mm-hmm. not that the wolf even sees the pig; he can smell him. Right. And that's our, you know, that is the sensory uh, f- faculty that we have that. There's a connection between nose to brain. It's just immediate. Uh, smell pig, eat pig. Right. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly. So, our, yeah, our wolf has power, but he's he's not especially brainy. But then we move on to the second pig, mm-hmm. uh, who. Uh, sees a man carrying furs, and I did not, F-U-R-Z-E, I didn't look it up, but it's it's sticks or twigs. And does the same thing. He just says, would you please just give me the, give it to me to build a house. So Mm -hmm. once again, the world, the external world is accommodating the masculine principle. Says, yes, I will help you in your ego building endeavor that is symbolized by a house, and here's the material that you have requested. And then what happens, Joseph? It's very sad. Once again, (laughs) life challenges the uh, the ego. (sighs) Mm. The wolf smells the little piglet in there. At first, it is also an interesting thing. At first, there's a demand, let me in. Let me in. Now, I'm not sure what would have happened if the pig had let him in, but this is also an interesting moment that often happens in nightmares, <laughs> where oh. there'll be a nightmare figure that it represents some psychic quality that we find really frightening and we don't know how to have a relationship with, so we will often run away mm. or buttress against it. So. Often in fairy tales, and, and I had a dream very much like this once, where there was a, a pounding on the door, and uh, it, was, it was a dark and stormy night, and I come down this mm-hmm. long, extraordinary stairway to the front door, and I open it, and there's this howling monster um, standing yeah. in the doorway, but I had opened the door. <laughs> let me in, let me yeah. in. And it was a real initiation. I, I had this revelation that the uh, creature was howling out of pain, and I began to weep out of compassion for the howling thing, mm-hmm. and it transformed into this kind of glorious angelic image. Mm. Oh. So sometimes opening the door mm. could lead to something unprecedented and a possible relationship. But here. Mm-hmm. This, this state of the ego can't imagine any conscious relationship with its own wolfishness. That, that just isn't going mm-hmm. to happen. And as often happens, if we keep these unconscious contents away or our instincts away, then they will start threatening to overtake us and gobble us up. And so we have another iteration. Either, either you open that door and you meet me, or I'm going to swallow you. And there's endless examples of people getting swallowed by their instincts. It's a great image of, uh, in a way, the archetypal unconscious. Yes. And it, 
it's our job as we grow up, uh, little by little, frustration by frustration, uh, defeat by defeat, but the little ones, like my being hoodwinked by an older kid, uh, of growing ego strength and uh, meeting those wolf-like uh, characteristics of other people or just the world in, in general. And uh, we have to build a barrier. Mm -hmm. And so our little pigs, are that's what they're trying to do, is keep the wolf part of psyche out uh, so that there is uh, a defense and it doesn't work. Uh, the archetypal wolf energy comes in uh, not through the door, but just by blowing the whole thing over. That I can imagine this whole thing like a, a tornado, just kablooey. It's over. And we see that again and again with, with kids um, who have a, a meltdown. The toddler that has a meltdown, the, the little kid that comes home from school because he scraped his knee and is just in distress. The distress has taken over. Uh, that that barrier has gone down. But I'm thinking just literally about sticks. At least sticks are sturdier than straw. Mm -hmm. uh, they have the potential uh, to become a tree if they had been able to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. A wooden house is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But here, too, the material is not sturdy enough. It's not developed enough. They're, they're, it's basically kindling, I guess, but not strong enough. Right. And there is a sense of progression, as you were saying. If we think of the fairy tale as a dream happening in a single person's psyche, the straw house, the, the inadequate clarity of the mm -hmm. ego doesn't work, so it suffers being gobbled up by the instincts. Yeah. But it comes back out, and it's learned something by being swallowed. Mm -hmm. It said, you know, I need something stronger. I need something tougher if I'm going to hold these instincts at bay. I also want to say that this isn't just a child's um, issue. I, I think about New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions oh. are built out of straw, generally speaking. Oh. You know, like, I'm going to go to Weight Watchers, you know, starting on January 2nd, and I'm going to lose 50 pounds. You know, and then we have this straw house that looks like, you know, counting points for Weight Watchers. And then all of a sudden, somebody says, come on over for dinner, you know, and that's all it takes, you know, and you are going to eat yeah. a half a gallon of ice cream. Um, and we're like, no, I won't, by the hair of my chinny chin chin. And the next thing we know, the wolf yeah. has swallowed us, and we've eaten a half a gallon of ice cream, and we're watching, you know, reruns of Friends, and we're like hating ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that I've had that experience. but. <laughs> Oh, I, I know you were just, um, exactly. it was a hypothetical situation hypothetical. altogether. But it the was wolf very, blew your house very down, Very funny man. because it's so true. Mm -hmm. 